Marcos, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marcos Alvarez. I work as a security researcher at CrowdStrike. And uh, this talk is going to be about MOOC Loader. But first, I would like to do a really quick quiz uh, uh, here. And just the first question is going to be like, uh, how many of you have heard about MOOC Loader? Can you just? All right. And uh, how many of you have reversed smoke loader? All right. And how many of you have reversed all the versions of smoke loader? <laughs> OK, all right. So yeah, um, I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, last year, 2021, was the 10th anniversary of smoke loader. And I've been tracking this family for some time now, like since 2016, 2017. I've been writing some reports and reading like many of them around as well. And yeah, but this time for this talk, I decided just to write down a historical overview on tactics and some of the data I have been collecting during this period. So let's start just to talk a little bit about motivations. And yeah, uh, that is, in my scale, smoke loader is really like a successful MAR family, you know. We talk about 10 years in active inactivity being used uh, as part as the distribution uh, scheme of many high profile MAR families. It's a red, like a good indicator of, of, of success, you know, like if you even dig a little bit deeper, we can extend that to any piece of software, you know, like if uh, that's managed, uh, any piece of software that managed to uh, be relevant for 10 years, it's, it's, it's like a red, like a big success. Uh, but I would like to highlight some more specific reasons behind this success of Smoke Loader. The first one that I would like to talk is about the business model. Uh, Smoke Loader is sold as a, as a product in, in underground forums by this user uh, known as Smoke LDR, Smoke Loader. And this guy, he's like, he's uh, really cautious and low profile. And he just pops up in these forums, like from time to time, they publish this advertisement uh, containing this general description, some change log about the, that specific release, and some buy information. And uh, the, relationship, the, the contact between uh, uh, buyers and the seller, it's really, really uh, direct, you know, like you pay, you get that package, and uh, like each one of us like follow like our own path. Then he really doesn't leave that much space for long-term like business relationships, uh, like we see in other more families that provides also infrastructure or also or they also provide some kind of like affiliation program. And this guy, yeah, he just managed to reduce his own risks to, to get caught. The second point uh, is smoke loader is really cheap, you know? If you think about it, um, you can get a full package uh, with all functionalities ready to go for less than 1,000 uh, US dollars. And this makes smoke loader quite affordable. And yeah, uh, Smoke Loader is a really simple uh, MAR family. If you think about Smoke Loader package, it's really simple. We have the exact exact folder, uh, a panel written in PHP that we use in MySQL, and like this huge, uh, not like this uh, big uh, blob of data that's just a uh, packet. Uh, uh, DLLs that are the built-in modules of Smoke Loader. And also get some documentation. Um, yeah, if you uh, look at the architecture of the bot, like Smoke Loader is also a quite simple bot, you know, like uh, if you think about like, uh, it has like all basic components you can find in modern uh, Maori family. But Smoke Loader really emphasizes in the anti-analysis component and the payload injection component. It's like, it's like it's a downloader. And we can see like along the history, all in all the, all its updates, then they keep 
uh, implementing new analysis, analysis, new anti -analysis, anti -analysis techniques and new and keep switching uh, over uh, different process injection techniques. And this just like makes it like just makes it a pain to to people to researchers analyzing it, analyzing it. Um, just talking a little bit more about the oper opera operational and how smoke loader is user is used in campaigns like in the wild by the, the buyers. Yeah, of course, like this is gonna be like a general picture because like if with smoke loader you can just chain uh, as as many stages as you you want and you can just uh, build up like customize like logics and you can just like do your own strategy. But usually what I see is then after a smoke loader is deployed, we see this initial initial step that does this initial reconnaissance and collect like few uh, environmental or like a, a small amount of environmental data about the host. Then the, the infected machine contacted the, contacted the, the controller and fetch some modules and deploy those modules that are just like the DLLs, encrypted DLLs. The second uh, step that usually happens, the uh, uh, smoke load just delivers this second stage that usually is uh, like an info stealer just to, to harvest in more data about the host and see and try to prioritize or try to figure out what, 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 what they are gonna do next. Or like sometimes they just like to want just to collect like random data um, from these infected machines. But yeah, usually like the, from the info stealers you, you, uh, I, I have seen, like the ones I can, I can mention just like, like Redline, like Vidar, like Raccoon before when it, it was like, active. And finally, uh, it delivers like a final payload that just like has a more, it's just like an, an, another stage that uh, contains another like more family, the main one that has this more specific uh, goal, like any like banking Trojan or like or, or rat families, and I can, I can I can't mention like AI, SFB, Silent Night, Tridex, Trickbots, then you see that like all these kind of like big features have been using smoke loader along the time. And for them it's really uh, kind of um, good leverage uh, on these like kind of uh, cheap but like well, well written uh, layer to protect the uh, final payload, and they can just kind of outsource in some kind of environmental checks uh, yeah, before delivering the main bot. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, smoke load uh, assembly code and tactics. When I start to do this research, then I, I just decide, okay, I'm gonna, try to draw a timeline. And even though like I did research on smoke loaders, like since I, I have been doing research on smoke loaders since 2016, 2017, as I mentioned before, uh, smoke loaders have been around for like a long time, you know, and I tried to, to figure out who, when, when was the starting point, you know, then I, I went through the literature and I, and, and I saw all these articles mentioning that smoke loader were Created in 2011, was like first uh, discovered in 2011. It was emerged from the underground in 2011. Then I just start to dig in and, and, and I try to find like okay the the first reference or the first detection to smoke loader, and I managed to find this really old uh, tweet from Microsoft Security Intelligence. Uh, talking about the, the about these new detections on DOF foil that's like an alias for for smoke loader, and in this tweet I could find uh, this link to this blog, and this blog was pointing to another blog, and the blog was offline, and but uh, Internet Archive saved me, and and uh, checking this snapshot 
of this blog, I could find like a really, really old sample of smoke loader. Yeah, and this sample was like a UPX packet uh, uh, portable executable file, and and uh, really old, and was uh, connecting back to these domains, the Falcon Fly in 2006 and 2007 that was resolving to this IP hosted in Ukraine back then. And yeah, I did, I reversed the sample. And yeah, it, it really is like a downloader. And it, it just uh, downloads like a, a, also like a encrypted pack of DLLs in inject in the victims, in the victim process, uh, in some pro processes in the, in the infected machine. And, but like I couldn't even I, I couldn't uh, really find any connection between these old, this really old version uh, uh, with like what I know about smoke loader like in modern versions you know like just like oh man it's so different maybe this is something else and, and you know, okay they are just like uh, I just just like something was wrong you know then I continued digging digging this data I collected and I could find another domain. Uh, resolving to the same IP address in that same period, like this live group 128 back then. And this time I managed to find like a bunch, a bunch of samples connecting to these, connecting back to this domain. And this time those samples uh, were like creating these mutex uh, that was like the smoke loader mutex that you can see there. And uh, the, the code of this sample, uh, uh, these, sa these samples are connected to live group or just like really similar to the first one. Then I could tie both campaigns. You know, they're just like they are kind of like like a new version of the, the second one is just a kind of a new version. Then I just okay. Now I, I have a start point, and I'm going to call those two guys as the beta version, and they are going to be like the prototype. And yeah, the, the first uh, prototype that I found, like I mentioned, that is like a, UP, a UPX, uh, uh, a UPX uh, uh, exec executable, packed executable. And this guy just like un uncompressed the, the payload and, and starts like a service host process and inject it itself inside the service host, uh, uh, inside this process. Uh, it's really simple. Then it checks some connections, connecting to some random sites, MSDN, like Mozilla, Google, etc. And then, and then it connects back to to the controller using HTTP, HTTP, everything in plain text and 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 just like just visible and cacheable. And this is like an example of the beacon for the sample I was analyzing. And then the, the controller is just going to send back some that big package, like XOR encrypted, containing like some DLLs. And those DLLs are going to be saved. Uh, the second version, uh, things got a little bit more interesting. And this is the version that Smoke Loader uh, started to create that mutex that I, I mentioned before, the Smoke Loader uh, mutex. But my reasoning, uh, for this version, it's just that okay, this guy he had a red like a like a, a like a bot that he could just send this packet uh, DLLs, and this bot was able to to load these DLLs in the in the infected machine. He just like created like a, a command. This command uh, uh, he called it like get loader. And he just uh, kind of automated, you know, like he, got, he added a new functionality in the, in the panel that you're gonna just upload your, your executable or your DLL and, and, and the, the, uh, the controller gonna just uh, send these, uh, these executable, this DLL to, to be installed like in the, in the bots. And this, is, this was when start, uh, we could see the first advertisements of Smoke Loader, and Smoke Loader started to get com commercial back in 2011. Um, then, uh, like, Smoke Loader spent some time just like building up the customer base, and you could see a new update in 2013, 
and this this new update you could see a red like smoke loader uh, doing some house cleaning and, and cleaning some finger, fingerprints. We could see that uh, smoke loader replaced the that mutex the smoke loader mutex by the bot ID, and this kind of like may, made it like less detectable. But updated the protocol a little bit, had this uh, hard coded string. Uh, with the version of the bot back then, and and, and yeah, but you can you could see that it's still like a very simple and, and yeah, uh, piece of malware. You could see that it, the, all the protocol uh, and the communication were like sent to HTTP GET, and everything was in plain text. Uh, in 2014 was the first time that Smoke Loader started to inject itself inside Explorer.exe. And this is uh, the same target process that we see nowadays. And, and yep, basically that's what's happened in 2014. In 2015, we got like really like big changes, you know, for smoke loader. Uh, they really, it's it's really like uh, interesting because they start to get a lot of feedback from customers and and also like uh, from people detecting. Detecting, uh, uh, detecting it, and they try, they try to really start to hide itself and 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 like clean up like some fingerprints. The first thing that uh, Spoke Little Loader did was encrypt encrypting all the resources. You know now, if you like uh, unpack like one uh, one Smoke Loader sample. And you, you, you look at, the, at that payload, you're not going to see any kind of hard-coded strings anymore. Everything is encrypted. And they also uh, start to use HTTP POST in, uh, instead of GET. And these would just like avoid like some of those requests to get uh, cached in some web proxies and, and this kind of stuff. They got a little bit more stealth, if you, if you, if you can say that, like back then. And they also refactored the the protocol. You know, now it uh, they created these kind of like placeholder placeholders like basic protocol that you just have like basically the same information you can find in the in the URL but separated by these these hashes. And for the first time, smoke loader start to encrypt the uh, their like, their communication. You know, like then, but. It was like a really like broken crypto scheme back then, but it was good enough for them to to breathe a little bit like further like uh, uh, back then and uh, and come up with something more sophisticated. But yeah, they were just like RC4 in these the payload with these four bytes RC4 key. And but the things that the key was just uh, appended to the beginning of the payload. You know, then you could just. Uh, uh, inspect any uh, all the communication just just by inspecting network network traffic. You know, then you don't need really to to reverse the, the malware to 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 see what they they were like doing back then. Then in 2016, we didn't have any uh, major release of Smoke Loader. They had like a break or like some vacations. I don't know. But yeah, uh, in 2017, they came back uh, uh, full power, and we could start to and start to get in shape to what we we know and what we understand as like the modern versions of Smoke Loader, what you can see nowadays. They started to implement these watchdog threads just to check some uh, anti, uh, some uh, uh, analysis attempts. Uh, like uh, try to check uh, process names, try to check foreground windows titles. Try, uh, they try to check also like load, loaded DLLs, and uh, and if they detect something, they're just just gonna like exit. And they also like update the crypto scheme. Uh, this time they they got to the, that what we know nowadays that that like famous scheme using two RC4 crypto. Uh, two, two four bytes uh, RC4 keys. Uh, they use one for encrypting uh, outgoing uh, traffic and another one for decrypting incoming uh, traffic. 
And they also like removed the placeholders, then we don't have any more, if you manage to decrypt it, to decrypt like a, the, uh, the, the checking or any kind of communication, you don't see any more those nicely uh, plain text uh, uh, messages, but now you see this binary based protocol and yeah, they just asked ask to follow this guy and, 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 and send to, to the controller. And they also implemented support to naming coins to dot .bit domains using OpenIC. And uh, the, the check-in back then, like in 2070, had fixed, fixed uh, 63 bytes, you know, and they necked. actually this was a problem because people start, a problem for them, the people start to fingerprint uh, smoke loader based on, on the size like the fingerprint network traffic. And in 2008, it, uh, we had the first 64 bits versions of Smoke Loader. And in Smoke Loader, start also to, to use Propagate as process injection technique. And uh, for back then, it was quite new, and this kind of uh, uh, made Smoke Loader evade some, some sandboxes. And they, they just keep switching the kind of the technique used for process injection. Um, in 2019, we got a little bit more of anti-analysis techniques implemented. Uh, Smoke Loader decided to just uh, do a copy of NTDLL and then load this copy and then start to use this copy, you know, then uh, doing that, they managed to bypass some hooking mechanisms of some sandbox because we didn't get any logs, behavioral logs like uh, about API calls in uh, in the in the report. And also, uh, they also decided to append some random size, uh, 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 random bytes array like on at the end of the. Of the of their messages, and these also kind of uh, 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 managed to defeat the detection that were using the the six the fixed six three bytes uh, of uh, from uh, that were like used in the in the in the beacon before, and also like in 2019 you could see the first cracked version of smoke loader. You know, like some. Customer just decide, okay, I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna, not gonna pay back again for this guy to to just replace my controller URL, URL that got that got like uh, that had some takeover happened or, or just got down. I'm gonna just uh, unpack smoke loader, patch it, and pack it again, and I have my my kind of my my own version, cracked version of, of, of smoke loader. But there uh, we could spot this variation. In 2020, a few more uh, anti-analysis te tests, uh, auto checks, uh, smoke loader started to to do some kind of geofencing, client-side geofencing, and start to check for some, for keyboard layout layout back then, uh, specifically some uh, Ukrainian and Russian uh, Russia uh, layouts and. Uh, uh, and also implement some VM, uh, some checks for, uh, against like VM agents, like as if you install, if you try to analyze a uh, smoke loader inside a virtual machine of these no technologies like uh, like VMware or VirtualBox, it, 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 and if you have the agent installed it there, then v, uh, smoke loader is gonna, it's gonna, it's not gonna detonate correctly. Uh, after all this time, also they decided to stop to check in the internet connection because this was also like quite fingerprintable, and uh, they were just like doing these random con uh, connections to Mozilla or to Google or to, to MSTN, just to check if the bot could reach the internet. And before connecting to the C2, and now Smokeloader just uh, connects directly to the to the controller URL. And also in 2020, they. Uh, remove the support to .bit because uh, OpenIC just dropped support to name coins like in 2019. They just did that cleanup, but it's really nice to see them uh, really like uh, the, that development life cycle, and they really like removing features that are not like 
the uh, uh, use it uh, not like important anymore in adding adding new ones like like a, like a proper like software development uh, company or a small company or something like that. And in 2021 and 2022, we didn't have any major releases of Smoke Loader. And this made, made me wonder, you know, like why you didn't have any uh, like releases in, in, in 2016, 2021, 2022. Then I started to think about like, oh, maybe this could be like some stretch, but I could kind of connect uh, these breaks to like the conflicts that happened and is happening uh, between uh, Russia and in Ukraine. Uh, actually, like if you think about back then in 2014, that, that had the, that annexation of Crimea, but uh, the, that conflict kind of like unfolded to two years like after that, then this could be one of the reasons then I, I, I uh, like I think like the smoke loader actor is based in some of the, that region. And then I did some statistics on, on the assembly code. Uh, on the top left is just like the average cyclo uh, uh, cyclometric uh, complexity of functions in, uh, in history. Like, uh, like it's, 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 this is all based on IDA, these assemblies. And yeah, on the top left, the average cyclometric comp uh, complexity of functions top right, uh, the counting of basic blocks, uh, bottom left, the count of functions, uh, bottom right, the imports that smoke loaded just dynamically uh, uh, resolve, it creates this importing table there. And uh, the first thing that I, I want to highlight is this, uh, the beginning of smoke loader, the prototyping phase, the beta, the beta version that I mentioned before, because you can really see that it was really a prototype with like with all these high complexity, small amount of functions and uh, big amount of basic blocks. We're talking here about those huge um, uh, monolithic blocks that's just like a pain to to follow or to reverse, but they were still like prototyping stuff, prototype uh, functionalities and, and testing stuff. And we could see that like uh, the following versions, things got like really like more stable and you could see that they did a big refactoring before, before it started to commerci commercializing smoke loader. And you can, you can see uh, complexity increasing in a linear way. And this is quite normal because you have functionalities being de developed like over time. And it's normal and healthy. The other point to highlight is that uh, in 2017, 2018, in 18, we could see uh, this spike that just smoke loader just like uh, decided to use like a different compi compi compiler, and then the the code was segmented like in a different way. Uh, this like messed up a little bit my diffing, but yeah, this, in, in, at the end, at the end, like functionality wise, we were like the same, and you can see even the complexity of the code like remained the same, even though we got this increase in, in, in basic block. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the data I've been collecting. We're talking about data collected from 2017 until, to, until 2020, that was like when the last major release of Smoke Loader uh, showed, uh, like appeared. And yeah, but I, I, I did this uh, this range because you, you, you can really see like a spi spike on usage of smoke loader when you have a new release because uh, you see these big actors just uh, trying to take advantage of those new all the new features that smoke loader can provide. And they, okay, before detection is implemented, I'm gonna just buy it and use it as my first stage. And you see like a big, a big uh, spike every time you get a new release of usage, every time you get a new release. Uh, the first data set I, I want to, 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 uh, to show to you is about infrastructure. Uh, we're talking here about uh, geolocation of domains, hosting, responsive uh, smoke loader controllers. 
we're not talking here about just like extracting config and get and get all the URLs there and and and, and trying to check like uh, uh, if the, this guy is resolving to some IP and try to plot these the geolocation of this IP in the in the in the chart, but we're talking about controllers that we we really uh, communicate with these controllers and we know that they are like smoke loader. And we had like 98 unique domains uh, located in 17 different countries. You can see that it's a little bit not really intuitive, like if you, if you had like our assumptions that smoke loader is a smoke loader actor and customers are mainly based in, in like Russian, Russian speak countries. We can see that uh, these controllers are really like spread around, and you can see like uh, nearly like 45% like hosted in Germany and US. You can see like a lot, also like a big amount like hosted in the Netherlands, and we see that a smoke loader it's kind of like has an international presence. You can see even. Uh, few campaigns happening in Latin America, in, in Argentina, in Mexico, uh, uh, some in Brazil, also in North Africa, like we saw some happening also in Nigeria. And then you see that uh, smoke loader is really popular. Uh, yeah, we, we saw that like they really spread it around, but if you look at historical data, you can see that it was it, it, uh, this, this is not the case like in the past, you know, then you can see like a, a, a change in, in where these, uh, uh, these controllers have been hosted like in time. You can see that in 2017, uh, those, pioneer, those controllers were uh, mainly hosted like in Russian speak countries. In, in, in Ukraine, Russia, and in that area there. And you can see these increasingly change like along the time. In 2020, we saw it that it got like uh, much more interna international and much more like widespread around the, the globe. Now, uh, talk a little bit about payloads. Uh, in 2020, we could see uh, f around like 14,000 unique files being delivered by smoke loader. And from these 14 unique files, we could kind of identify, identify uh, 4,300 of those files. And we could, we could like uh, identify uh, 18 different families. And you can see like a lot of like big families, like popular families there. And um, at, uh, of course, uh, this is just a small, a small portion or a small section of the big picture, you know, like this is, this is what we could, of course, like what we could like observe like in our data set. But yeah, smoke loader, like I think it's much bigger than this. And uh, I would like to highlight those four families that there are seen for the first time in 2020, uh, being dropped by smoke loader. And now I just broke down this data uh, along the year, like two months, and you can see that smoke loader had like, ha had like a big, uh, it was like really active in, in like July, uh, June, July, in August, that's kind of uh, summer in the, in the Northern hemisphere, then this kind of, kind of nar narrow down our possibilities, we, we assume that, I don't know, they get more active in summer. But yeah, this is the hypothesis, but yeah. We can see, look at the data. And this is the same if you see all the previous year, you know, this is kind of a pattern. And if you break down these by, by family, we can see some interesting points as well. The first one is about uh, these campaigns happening in, in Mars, uh, in April, in, in June, uh, these ISFB campaigns, mainly, ta mainly targeting, targeting Australia and Japan. And these, uh, these uh, campaigns, were, they were using the 
the geofencing capabilities of smoke loader to just uh, uh, to just narrow down uh, uh, who would be receive the final the final payload in this case the SFB. And the interesting thing is that in the same the, this same campaign was also delivering Silent Night. And then we could see these two like kind of big families uh, sharing distribution infrastructure. And this was like some kind of like cool to 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 observe. Uh, the second point we're talking, we're going to talk about Silent Night. That in 2020, it was like the first time we could observe this family, this family being distributed by a smoke loader, and you see that uh, they were like really constant along the year. And in this case, Silent Night was also using uh, smoke loader geofencing capability, geofencing capabilities to target to target uh, victims in Japan. And we could confirm that by, uh, by looking at their like web inject. And, and you could see like the, the, like the, all the, the Japanese banks and, 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 and the guys also like talked about, about Silent Night like early in the morning. Um, yeah, and these uh, Silent Night campaigns were like the same uh, there that were, were dropping ISFB before. Um, the last uh, case uh, is the, the system BC, this uh, rat that has been also dropped by smoke loader and also by several other uh, uh, loaders. Uh, and yeah, like we, uh, uh, we could see also uh, this trending of, of dropping this rat. Uh, and then after drop this red, uh, dropping some kind of ransomware, you know, we saw like some ransomware families using uh, uh, system BC, and you can, you, you, we can see that also like in a very nice article published by Sophos also in 2020 about about uh, ransomware families leverage on on system BC, but yeah. We could see uh, these guys shaming uh, these families using smoke loader. And now, like just like some takeaways. Uh, the first one is that like we can collect uh, information of like high profile like groups to distribute to their distribution scheme. Uh, you can like like observing their geofancy uh, setup and what kind of targets they are they are. Inter interested uh, on and the second one we can build up connections among like uh, families sharing the same uh, distribution method like we saw in ISFB and Silent Night uh, example um, we can we can see also smoke loader uh, being increasingly increasingly used to buy uh, ransomware like families. Um, uh, to triage potential targets like Avadon, Roger, and Lockbit. And you can see also like uh, the international presence of smoke loader, that smoke loader is getting more and more international. And this is the trend, I don't think this is gonna change. A lot of presence in Latin America, a lot of, a lot, uh, some presence in Africa as well. And yeah, I don't think like a uh, smoke loader actor has any kind of like like big reason to hit retire like right now, and I think uh, smoke loader is gonna be still be around for for some time. And yep, that's uh, I would like to thank like my my team at CrowdStrike, uh, the TAC team, and also would like to thank the guys from the TCR team at Mandiant. And yeah, that's all from from me. Thank you very much. Okay, I can I can take one question. Otherwise, we're going to be late. Yes, it's not far. 
Chris Wakely, proof point. Uh, have you analyzed the modules that get downloaded? Um, I actually I did it. Uh, they, uh, if you think like about like like number wise, like we like they had like eight back then, you know, and then they grew up for 15 or 16. Yeah. But uh, I just uh, realized that we have so many like so many uh, articles about it, you know, around. I'm gonna leave. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna publish these slides. I'm gonna add some references to those articles talking about the modules, and I just thought, okay, I'm gonna just focus in the, in the timeline, in the history, you know, that's, that's something that we cannot find online that, that, that easy, but yeah. I did some analysis on the modules, and it's like uh, uh, key logs, like uh, password grabs, and like, like remote uh, uh, desktop, and this kind of stuff, VNC, proxy, uh, they, have, they provide those modules, uh, but uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.